Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Here we go, folks. We're back. We're here. We're queer. I'm hungover. He's gay. We're doing it. We're putting them in the can. Boy, it is 178 <laughs> degrees in here. We're wearing a couple of hoodies. We're a couple of queefs. And uh, yeah, I'm sweating. I'm sweating out uh, vodka. I got a long sleeve underneath here, too. I got a long Ooh. sleeve tee and a hoodie. And it's, uh, we have no control of the temperature. This no, office sucks. We no. really fucked up. This is a gulag. We're in one of those rooms that in the movie Saw, it feels like. It it's is. Come kill us. I saw that. Um, as much as we Seesaw. miss Shelby, we worship Shelby. Yeah, he He's the good. best. He made the show what it is. All downhill after he that. He got us. He got the Patreon really cooking. Yeah. He He's got, number one. He got scurvy, he, unfortunately. He might have fucked up on the studio. That's his one and only fuck up. Yeah, on paper, it's pretty good. Hey, Midtown, high rise, a uh, room with keys and a, and a front desk and fat ladies at the, at the, at the reception, but tiny room, jizz on the walls, yep. no AC. We're going to die in here. Yeah. I think this is where Hamas uh, sets up. Maybe George is saying cut it. Uh, it's a hot, hot, uh, hot towel head. Um, hot coffee. Hot coffee. Hot news. Well, we're we're backing episodes, so who knows? Hamas could be gone. Israel could be gone if uh, these folks get their way. And uh, we could be joining in. They say America could be. Uh, it's fifty fifty right now. If we uh, if we. You know, join the fight. Ah, the old fight. Well, we also we we give them some weapons and whatnot. We're sure. in there. Yeah. And he farts. It's hot. It's warm. It's November. November 7th. Wow. Well, it's that fucking New York kick in the ass of like, hey, it's chilly out there. Watch out. And then you get on the subway and you're like, <laughs> or you get here and you're, you're sweating bullets. Yes, it's crispy, though. I love the October oh. crisp. Baseball, college yes. football, leaves changing. It is really something out I there. I got all the windows open in my apartment getting that cross flow, cross fit. Cross... Crossbow. Yes, cross-dress. And oh, it is nice. Easy. It's getting cool and comfortable in there. You know what I'm so bummed about? I got a story that's just not good. I'm so bummed. I feel on shame. Stage? On shame. No, no, I'm not right now. I'm oh, 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 great. Okay. I'm, in, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Mm. Somewhere along the line. Maybe you can help me out. Chuck, chime in. Chuck, chime. I'm the shame, shame Gillis. I thought... I remember hearing that Congress got together and we put an end to daylight savings and it kicks in no, this year. No, we need daylight savings. No, we hate daylight savings. What? Everybody hates it. Are it, you crazy? It, it's good. I mean, it, it's good for the farming. No, I think the farm, that's a myth now. The farmers don't even care. Farmers the daylight only. savings is what makes it pitch black at four o'clock for six months out of the year. I know, but I thought it had some uh, originally productive effects that we needed. It's like everything else. It's like the Electoral College ah, and all this other shit. It's from 1875. The horse and buggy. Because some states just don't do it. Arizona's just like, we don't do that. Really? Yeah. I hate the dark at four. Of course. It's That's why we need to get rid of it. That's what I'm saying. But I thought it was necessary for the, no, the flow of the earth, who? or menstruation, no. or the moon, and the stars, and sync, the Backstreet Boys. The farm is bullshit. You just wake up earlier. Yeah. It's but, bullshit, but I thought it had passed. Didn't you remember you said that? Because Congress voted and passed it, but it didn't go to the Senate or the House or the whatever, the apartment. My yeah. guess is it's going to be like, <laughs> in this many years, we'll phase it out. That's my yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. But I thought it was done, and here's the worst part. I've been telling people. I've been dropping ah, flyers from airplanes, and everyone goes, really? I go, yeah, you didn't see the story? I saw I didn't have the heart to tell you. Maybe you can find some detail, because it did pass, and uh -huh. I told it. I was in a bus. I was in a sprinter van with Nate and his whole gang. Oh, wow. Got some fun stories coming Please. your way, but Can't I was like, wait. they were like, yeah, it's going to be depressing soon, winter, and I was like, but no daylight savings. It's going to stay light out till five, and everyone went, 
What? Yeah, they really teased it, didn't they? But I, I don't remember getting past because I remember them going, oh, we're right there at the finish line. Ah, we're going to not do it. Well, it was a big thing where everyone, it felt like, oh, Congress finally came up with something, but it didn't go to the, the castle or the mm, moat or somewhere. Right, right. Biden hut, or cabin. Pelosi. I don't know. Somebody. I blame AOC. But uh, boy, she fucking sucks. But anyways, Very I don't want to get to, uh, I don't find her attractive anymore. She sucks. What are you, you going to say there, Chuck? Here we go. This is from March of 2022, so this is like okay. a li- this is like a year and a half old. All right. Yeah, and yeah. It says the U.S. Senate on Tuesday passed legislation that would make daylight saving time permanent starting in 2023. That's and what I thought. That's what I read. Permanent. I read the headline. Well, they're permanent. Like it's it's a misleading sentence. It says it's going to be ending the twice annual changing of clocks. Right. So what they mean is they're eliminating what we know as daylight saving. Fall time. back. Oh, yes. Spring forward. But the, the Senate approved the measure called by the Sunshine Protection Act un- unanimously by vote voice vote. The House of Representatives, which has held a committee hearing on the matter, must still pass the bill before it can go to it's Joe Biden to sign. Mm, hate the, the House. The White House has not said whether Biden supports it. Uh, so I don't know. I'm, I'll on. look for anything that happened after that. That's the House. But the House, they didn't do it because they're too busy, uh, I don't know, painting or yes, mowing yes. the lawn or whatever. Yeah, yeah you got to keep up the House. you got a landscape. They're out riding fences. But anyways, I've been telling everybody, people went, you're kidding. And I went, no, don't you remember? It's starting 2023. I remember, yeah, but I guess it didn't take. It said it died in the House at the end of died the last session. Died in the session. House? What is it, Biden? And so Senator Mark Marco Rubio of Florida reintroduced uh, yeah. the Sunshine Protection okay. Act in the Senate on Wednesday of this past March. So I don't know what's happening since this past March, but... But the I, fact is, November 4, three days ago, we fucking fell back the clocks. Oh, uh, And now right? it's pitch fucking black at 4 p.m. Yeah, it's a nightmare. And we got all these deaths of despair with the TikTok and the AIDS and the, right. and the suicide and the alcohol and the fentanyl. We need light. Light is big, especially with the kooks running around. The oh. kooks thrive in the daylight spring back forward time. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know me, still the same OG, but I've been low key. I take the subway during the day. That sun goes to bed. Woo-wee. Hit me with a lift ride. I'm not yeah, getting oh, yeah. on the nighttime subway ride, especially in the autumn where it's... Ar- Oh yeah, Halloween is a buzz, and then the ghouls are out. But yes. when that sun goes down, it's it's like uh, the purge exactly. out there. No, sometimes we leave the studio, or you, you go to a movie or oh. a therapy, and you come out and it's dark, and you're like, oh, the lopper. Oh. Yeah, totally. But this is also weird when you come out of a movie and it's uh, it's bright. That's a weird feeling. You're like, what the hell? I thought we we worked this out. Well, that's the old bar feel. I remember we would oh. write. We tried to write soup and suds, and I'd be like, let's have nine beers to get us flowing. Those were the days. And then you leave. Still got to finish that script. Yeah, we'll get on it. We yeah. got a good bite on it, I yeah. think, in 2011. We got a chunk out of it. Um, maybe we should write something. Yeah, it's not easy. We never try anything. Well, we do this. Yeah, that's true. This is 12 years of uh, entertain. That's true. We had the good years with Shelby. And, uh, yep, it's all downhill after that. But <laughs> Chuck is fuming. We had a good run. Uh, it's a we'll, bit. We'll find a new guy. But yeah, uh, we've gone through a lot of iterations. Many studios. We had uh, a cat at one point in here. Big cat. Don't care for the cat. We had, I Ouch. mean, think of the producers. Benji, Woo! Becky, Fatigate. Remember the other wow. guy? Um Friedman, what was his name? Lex? No, Friedman. he had a big Jufro. His name was uh, Jufro. Friedman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, not rigging a Jew bell. Very quiet early on at at Stand Up New York. He was one of the guys. Oh uh, yeah, Friedman. He was quiet. He laughed. Oh, okay. I think he died that music fest in I Israel. Forget his I, name. I need to see the uh, the photo of the fro. Fuck, the Frodo. Well, I'll figure it out. But anyway, he was there, and then we had uh, we went we had Black Lou for a minute. Black at Lou, Sirius Radio. At Sirius, boy, we've been all over town. I hope you guys appreciate the the consistency. And, the sh- and we had Shelby for years, the glory years, as they're known. Sure, <laughs> and, sure. Uh, glory and days. Chucky, which I just watched Child's Play. I never saw that movie. Not a fan. It's fun. Uh, yeah, there's some action and there's some some frights. It's silly. I just saw Dumb Money. 
Oh, that's the movie. That's the movie they made like in the middle of the thing the, that it's about. The GameStop. Like they, it happened, and they were like, "Get, get to work." Yes. Get yes. a boom mic. Let's shoot it. Exactly. Well, there's no. You can't make a story about anything now. We've done everything. You know, Napoleon's taken. So you got to go with shit. We got BlackBerry. We got Uber. We got WeWork. All the movies are just about companies that got off the ground and then failed. Napoleon's coming. I'm pumped for Napoleon. I can't wait for Napoleon. Bunch of fun stuff. Scorsese. Uh, oh, Napoleon. Yeah. Napoleon. There's a new Alexander Payne that I. Heard that's, good. that's right. I saw I saw a trailer. It looked a little saparu. I thought it looked pretty good. I, I believe in pain, and uh, yes. Sarah's sister Sarge said it was fantastic. So pain I have pain. belief. No pain, no gain. But yeah, I'll go see it. But if, I hope movies are coming back. You know, Barbie, Oppenqueef, and uh, Top Gun. You know, they they kind of got a buzz going about the cinema. I know, but they're all not pipes. Great. Ah, you didn't like Op. Op was okay. It was pretty good. Check out Joe and Ron on Talk Movies. Big episode. I like Op. I did like Op. Barbie okay. I hated. Really? Top Gun I hated. Okay. Because they're all big toys. Yeah, uh, yeah. We need, I want an old school, a couple of cops, one's yes. crooked. Yes. You know, they beat up a kid. Yes. And then the kid's dad hits the cop over the head with a frying pan. Now we're talking. 90 minutes, a nice, you know, 75% Rotten Tomatoes yes. score. Yes, good dialogue, a decent character, some nice directing, maybe a New York story, a, 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 a just give me a car. I'm sick a, of stuff without a car. A car, a romance, whatever it is. But I saw dumb money at the uh, Alamo Draft. Mm. You know this place? Of course. What am I, an asshole? Well, there's one in Wall Street. I didn't know that. Oh, I've heard about that. I think Liz was telling me. It's fantastic. You can lay down and you can fuck a lady. It's pretty good. I got a handy. But we went in there and you, you get a couple drinks and it's pretty great because you just push a boop. You push a button and you write down your order and they come by and they go... And then you, you, oh. they run off, they come back with margaritas. During the film? During the film or before. I don't know about that. And the, and the button is also used to kick out people if they're talking. You can oh, press really? the button and leave a note that says this person behind me is talking. And they anonymously have someone run out to them and say, like, hey, you can't talk in here, and they so, kick them out. Wow. Here's my question. Why don't we do this at comedy shows? All I hear at every comedy show is like, all of a pina colada. And you're like, that's your whisper? Pina colada? Yell again across the room? Give me the button. Write it down. Write down pina colada. And write down kick out that coos. That's not bad, but then you got people looking down, writing down. Yeah, but it takes four seconds. You go, pina colada. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm down. I'm open. But My legs are spread. Yeah. Uh, fun fun movie. Uh, not great, but the best part of the movie was all the pandemic stuff. They throw back to pandemic time. Oh. It's 2020, so you got to see, like, oh, yeah, the pull the mask over the nose, the swab. It all came back, and you got to see how silly it all was. Yeah, it was intense. Uh, I just had a covid moment the other day, though, mm. where uh, I was at yesterday. I was at Chipotle, of course. And, uh, you know, COVID, we moved on from the COVID, the thing, the masks and the business and the whatever. Although the delivery doctor, uh, for my, my baby delivery doctor, she was like, ideally you should get another COVID vaccine with mm, the baby. How Not about for that? the baby, but like, uh, to protect, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you never know what to do. I'm nah. like, all right, she's a doctor. She's nice. Sure. I like her. She's like, you should get one. I'm like this. All right. And you don't want to be a bad dad with no vaccine. But also, maybe the kid should get COVID. Cough right in his ass and get it out of the way. It's like chicken pox. Wow. He's like, uh, he's going to be four hours old, this kid. Hey, you get it him. in. Early bird gets the COVID. Yeah, I don't know how it works, really. But I know herpes can take a kid right out. Is that right? Yeah. you got If your wife has a herpes outbreak and the baby smushes their little face through there, they, oh. their body doesn't know how to deal with herpes. Oh. They have no immune system. What a bummer. The first puss you get, you get the herpes. It's tough. So uh, we've, been, we've had to be safe, but everything's good. Anyways, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, Chipotle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So I was at Chipotle. You tell me how you feel, where you come out about this. I'll come out. So I'm sitting there eating my burrito, and then at the end of the long chair, this is the one over on uh, just north of Union Square on oh. Broadway and 16th, where I saw that barrel fire. Oh, that's right, yeah. The writing is on the wall in this city. Yeah, it's all coming apart. Walking up Broadway in uh, Chelsea yesterday, I guess that is, whatever. Yeah. Chelsea South. I don't know. I'm walking, and just a garbage fire. Full blaze. We can pl plug it into the YouTube. Just a, a nine-foot blaze. Everyone's yep. just walking around it, looking, yep. going, oh, all right. And then you wonder, is that a, a 
kid cutting up uh, with a little firework? Is that a cigarette? Is that the the terrorism? Who knows? I, it was a little off putting, but I just went to Equinox and <laughs> hit the steam room. I yeah. did call. I called it in. They go, yeah, we go. I called and I go. Oh, you called? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. I'm a good Samaritan. So they call and they go, yeah, yeah, uh, garbage fire, 17. And I go, yeah. And they go, all right, yeah, we were on it. And I go, okay, sorry. Uh, that's kind of fun. But it was one of those things where I'm like, I don't see anybody call. Like, is the whole city going to burn down because we're all just looking at this thing, videotaping? I wouldn't have called. I didn't know you could just call. Yeah, sure you can call. I feel like I'm bothering police when I call. They're <laughs> like, what do you want? I'm like, my wife's getting murdered. All right, take it easy. Well, this is this big Karen shit. This is what happens when everyone's like, oh, you don't want to be a Karen. You're right. It overcorrects. So I'm like, so I, I see three kids beating up a, a slow kid. Sure. I, I shouldn't call because I'm a Karen? You're a Karen. Then they film you, and they go, oh, you're, you're a narc, you piece of shit. And you're like, the kid's retarded. He's getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, but like we went too hard on the Karen because sometimes you're supposed to yell at an employee. Uh, yes. You know, sometimes they're fucking up. If an employee puts a pinky up your ass and you're like, wait, this is Dunkin' Donuts. Well, Karen it up. Someone did that bit about Biggie at the beginning of Juicy when he's like, Juicy. all the people that, yeah, that's the biggest one. Ah. That's the name of it. He's the biggest It was one. all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Oh, Salt and it. pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. But at the beginning of the song, he's talking and he says, all the people that called the police on me. Because I was trying to make some extra money hustling. And you're like, everyone's like, yeah, fuck them. But you're like, well, he's selling drugs to kids in front yeah. of their apartment. I mean, I, you don't want to, you can't have. He's selling crack. You're ruining your <laughs> own community. You got a teenager selling crack in front of your house. I mean, I don't think that's that crazy. Yeah, you better call the police. Uh, but any, any fucks. Anywho. Anyways, welcome to uh, conservative radio. But um, <laughs> so I'm walking. I walk to see the barrel fire. I go to Chipotle. And it's a long table. You know that Chipotle there? I know it. It's a, it's a long, thin one, like my dick. <laughs> long, thin Chipotle. I'm at the end of the table. I'm eating my burrito. Down the end, there's like two hipstery college kids. I don't want to say hipster, but college kids. Sure, sure. Blue hair, nose ring, vape. Yeah. And one is coughing a wet, open cough. Like Ooh. this. <coughs> oh, <coughs> that's the worst. And like it's a pair every five seconds. So it's like this. <coughs> <coughs> right, right. Four seconds pass. <coughs> but wetter than that, because she's yeah. sick. No cover, no nothing? Uh, so every once in a while, a cover, but they're talking, and I'm just kind of like... Take it outside, sister. I'm kind of like... I'm like I'm like fucking uh, Leslie Nielsen at the beginning of Naked Gun, which is how I feel, by the way, when I see some of the marches. Whatever. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. But anyways, I don't want to get too crazy. So I'm eating the burrito, and she keeps doing the wet cough, yeah. and I'm like kind of doing this... And then they start. Discuss, she catches my eye yeah. as I go like, what, "What is this?" Good. And she goes, she like passive aggressively says to her friend, "She goes, they always stare at me. Everyone just gives me dirty looks. You know, they wow. could they they could wear a mask. Oh, and now so it could you, takes Coos? everything I have to be like, so I'm supposed to wear a mask? I'm eating. Yes, I'm at a restaurant eating a meal. Yes, you are openly wet." Coughing sick and fuck COVID, forget COVID and 2020 and all that shit. What about the flu, AIDS, the other stuff? Well, we're living in a society. I know. It's one thing if you have to be on the stuff, you gotta get somewhere, whatever. But like, you're just in a restaurant. And they, by the way, they were finished eating. Oh. They're just lingering, wet coughing, like loitering. A hardcore cough. And then she's like, people always give me the same dirty look. And you go, well, do you see that everyone's yes. giving you this look? You're the denominator, or and then she goes, "Yeah, you could, he could wear a mask." <laughs> like, why do I have to wear a mask? Yes, You're exactly. Sick. Well, I don't understand these people. They play music loud on the subway, and you go, "Hey, could you turn that down?" They go, "Fuck you!" Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, "Why am I the bad guy?" You're inconsiderate and rude, and, and pissing off the whole train. It happens all the time. It's it's New York. It was back to back, by the way. The campfire on the sidewalk. Right. And this lady, I'm like, I gotta get out. Yeah, but don't you want to just? Because I'm a I'm an autistic coo cuckoo whatever. But like, don't you want to just take these people and put them in a courtroom? Not, no one goes to jail, but just go, here's a jury, here's a judge, this is why you're wrong. And then they fight their side, and then you get 18 people to go, no, no, you're wrong. Well, this is what I want my show to be, In Consideration. Yes, that which, show's uh, brilliant. Went nowhere, uh. but that's the show. You go in and you say, why, why do you think, why, why is, how is this not ridiculous? And also, it's like, I've been sick in public, we've all been sick, you, you force your way, you have to work, you have to travel. You should feel guilt. You should of be course. like, sorry, I'm of so course. sorry. And then they and get then mad at you. The second you finish eating, you should be like, we got to get out of here. I'm coughing everywhere. Of course. Like, that's, 
You're supposed to be the one with shame. And yes. be out sick, whatever. You got to live your life, right. yada, yada. We can't all just whatever. But you're like, you're the asshole. Right. Well, we yell at people, hey, you didn't get the vaccine. You're not wearing a mask. I might get sick. But when you cough, that's okay. You you get everybody in the restaurant sick, but we have to wear the mask. It doesn't make sense. I don't want to sound like a boomer, but it's a young, college entitlement feeling. Enti- entitlement of like... Everyone else needs. I'm sick. Revolve. I'm going to a public restaurant. I'm going to cough as much as I want. And if you don't like it, you wear a mask yes, while you're yes. eating. Why right. do I have to make the change? Of course. It, well, they sound like the uh, the capital riders. They're like, oh, if you, if you feel unsafe, if you wear a mask. I don't. I'm not wearing one. You it, sound like them. It's crazy. And uh, anyway, so that bothered, but it took everything I had not to be like. Why do I have to, you know, you just yeah, go, all yeah. right, where am I going with this? What am I going to do? I'm going to fight with two 20-year-old girls who are sick, and then they do, they'll they they'll cough on me. Of course. But if everybody's giving me, I know you covered this, but everybody's giving me dirty looks everywhere I go, maybe make a change. Maybe absorb that and go, what is it about me that's getting dirty looks? I feel that way without the dirty looks. Sure. I'm like, they want to give me dirty looks. They hate me. I'm a piece of shit. I should take my own life. Wow, this lady bothers me. Really bothered me. Man, what a man. You want the employee to, to kick in and go like, hey, hey. You know, stop coughing in here. They don't care. And then I literally left there. I walk a block, and there's a garbage on fire 12 feet in the air. Good times. And you're like, well, what am I doing here? And my did, rent's $7,500 a day. Did you give it one of these? No. With the fire? No, one but I do, a little? I do like that. I like All the, right. the double arm rub. Yeah. Maybe get a uh, marshmallow on a stick going. Who knows? Can of beans. Hey, Tuesday Stories brought to you by... Stand Up Cinema. Hey, folks, we got a special announcement. The 2023 New York Comedy Festival presents Stand Up Cinema short films by comics. The screening of short films produced by stand up comedians takes place at the beautiful Quad Cinema on 13th Street in Manhattan. Stand Up Cinema will include the premiere of Civic Duty, starring Joe List and Tommy Pope. You'll also see works by Graham K., Rel Battle, and Sarah Tolomash. And all of them. Get your tickets for this one night event happening November 9th by going to standupcinema.com. Oh, sorry, standupcinema.eventbrite.com. That's standupcinema.eventbrite.com. We will see you, Queefs, at the movies. Hey, hey, folks, Tuesday's story is brought to you by BetterHelp. The stores are filled with holiday spirit, but maybe you're not really feeling it this year. It can be hard to play pretend when you're struggling. Talking to a therapist can help take some of that pressure off. When you need support, turn to BetterHelp. It's online therapy that is flexible and designed to suit your schedule. Getting started is easy. Just fill out a quick questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. You can meet your therapist by video, phone, or message. You got to do therapy. We're all doing therapy. It's good for you. You never know what's clogging up in that brain. Take the garbage out. Figure yourself out. Get some help. You can always switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, no questions asked. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesday to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. BetterHelp dot com slash Tuesdays. Tuesday Stories is brought to you by Manscaped. Sports season is in full swing and balls are everywhere. Clean yours up with Manscaped. They've launched the fifth generation performance package featuring the all new lawnmower 4 5.0 Ultra to get you in tip top shape. When you're going in for a close shave below the belt, you want the best of the best. The new trimmer features two interchangeable blade heads. One is for taking a little off the top, and the other is the new foil blade for a smooth close shave. Thank God. With three length settings, combs, and waterproofing, you can get any look, anywhere. I keep it in my suitcase. I travel with it every weekend. Clean up house up top. Clean up house down low. Got to do it. And they got the close shave, which is key with the with the junk. You know, you don't want to be weed whacking with a rusty old blade down there. You want something close and safe. As always, Manscaped Skin Safe Technology helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs. So you're always looking great and feeling your best. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. Your balls have been through enough. It's time to go ultra with Manscaped.
Tuesday's story is brought to you by Raycon. Snag the best deals of the season way before Black Friday with Raycon products up to 50% off. Get the best gifts for everyone on your list. Raycon's everyday earbuds are a total game changer. They have a perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and a whopping 32-hour battery life. Wow. I love my Raycon everyday earbuds and never leave home without them. With eight hours of playtime, crystal clear call quality and resistance to water and sweat, you can take these puppies anywhere. Past year, Raycon has upped their game even more with the launch of the Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. Raycon Power Tech lets you change your gear easily, both at home and on the go with charging stations and wildly fast charging cables. Their five-star rated Magic 180 cable lets you charge eight times faster. So you get back to business, scroll on TikTok. To get everyone in the holiday shopping spirit a bit early, Raycon is currently offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 50% off. Hurry now, buy Raycon.com slash Tuesdays to get 20 to 50 Percent off site wide. That's pretty good. That's buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays to score up to 50% off Raycon products. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. But yeah, I, I got a I got a little bit of a, a craw stuck in. Okay. Now tell me where you where you come down on this there, Fatty. Sure. Okay. Doing uh, road gigs this last weekend at Oklahoma City, flew in from LaGuardia, and then Dallas the next day. All right. So I fly into LaGuardia. You know me. I like to cut it close. Land at three. Shows at seven. Okay. So I go, all right, I'm going to land at three, get an Uber, go right to the hotel. I need that hotel time. Of course. It's only two and a half hours or whatever because I'm getting to the theater at 630. But I need that two and a half. I'm going to shit, shower, shave, regroup, get the flight off you, look at your notes, jerk off, that whole thing. Got it. I got it. I don't have any, uh, what do you call it, pre-show rituals and all that horse shit, but I need that hour or two or three, whatever, before the show. So Andrew Youngblood, my my old pal, Mm -hmm. he goes, well, fuck it, Uber. I'm opening for you. I'll just pick you up. And I go, well, I appreciate it. It's a nice gesture, but I want to just get in, get out, and go right to the hotel. I don't want to, I feel bad if you just scoop me up. You know, you're not an Uber. You're a friend. I don't want to just, once I see you, I'm going to want to hang. I see. You know, you want to just, I just need to get to that hotel. I need those few hours. Okay. And he's like, I don't mind. I'll just pick you up. I'll drop you at the hotel. We don't have to hang. We'll hang later. And I'm like, all right, but I, I don't I don't mind Ubering. And he's like, I'll pick you up. Yeah, this makes sense so far. He picks you up. Because down at OKC, as we always talk about, you're going to get a cowboy who goes, so, partner. Oh, uh, that's true. What brings you around here? You that's don't look true. like no cowboy to me. And you go, oh, I'm a comedian. Well, I saw Bill Engvall one time. Yeah, you like him? You know him? You ever work with him? No, I don't know Bill Engvall. Here's your sign. Let me put on his CD. All right. <laughs> so he picks me up, and I get to the airport. I go, hey, I'm at, I'm, I'm at the baggage. How you looking? He goes, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I go, all right, no problem. We get in the We get in the Tesla. And he goes, oh, I got, uh, I got some bad news. Tesla? He's got an electric car again? He's got a... Well, the Tesla's all right. Okay. It's better than the other horse <laughs> shit we, yeah, we had before. We dealt with. But I still hate EVs. Eddie so, Betters? Yes. <laughs> so uh, we get in the Tesla, and he goes, I got bad news. I got a charge. And I go, oh, Come on. here, this, this is... can't this, be real. This is how it happens. This is how it happens. I knew I should have gotten the Uber, but you don't want to be the diva. This guy's nice enough to pick me up to the airport, so I got a couple of uh, I'm, I'm checks and balances here. Should I should I just say, fuck you, I'm getting the Uber, this is what I wanted, or should I just try to be nice and go charge with him? I mean, this is insane. So he goes, it'll take 10 minutes. It take We'll just get a little juice, and then we can, you know, hit the road tomorrow. And I go, all right, all right. Charge stations uh, a mile out, you know, 10 miles out. Here we go. Now we're sitting next to a Red Robin, and he goes, look. We'll pull up. I'll go right to the charge station. We'll charge for 10 minutes. That'll give me like half juice, and then we'll hightail it to the hotel. And I go, okay, okay. We get to the charge station. There's a line. There's a Tesla line. So now I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm furious now. I go, you see? This is why I wanted to get the Uber. He goes, the line moves pretty quick. I go, you said 10 minutes. Now we're off Now we're off on who knows what. I don't understand the elect. I don't get it. It's a nightmare because your whole world revolves around that charge. You have to play everything out. You got to schedule your whole life around a charge. This is why I like the hybrid. 
Yes. Because that has a reserve. That's the move. So we wait in line. No, no, no action. And I go, I'm Ubering. This is out of control. And he's like, you can Uber, but by the time the Uber gets here and that whole thing happens, then they pick you up. Then you got, we'll probably be even. And I was like, why do you care? Let me, let me just leave. What are we doing here? Right. And he's a nice guy. So I'm trying not to be mean, but I'm like, this is crazy. This is, I would have been at the hotel by now. Right. So finally the line starts moving, whatever. And I go, now we're second in line. And I go, I'm, I'm getting the Uber. So then I called Uber. Uber says, I'll be there in eight minutes. I go, all right, now I'm up against it. Now I don't want the line to get moving before the Uber gets here. Right. Because I don't want to be that guy because now I got it for nothing. Right. Uber finally shows up. It's 20 miles down. I got to run through Ruby Tuesday parking lot with the bag, the whole thing. Get the Uber. I get the uh, the Asian guy who's uh, no urgency. You know these. You know these drivers are like, okay, where are we going here? Yes, of course. He pulls out the the fucking Thomas guide. He's reading about the paper. He's like, can you believe Israel? All this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's go. So we're waiting on a red light. The line is too long that we're in traffic now. So he goes around and up and over and tries to cut back and it's a whole thing. Thirty minutes to get to the hotel. Finally, I get to the hotel, and I'm like, checking in. That takes 10 minutes, whatever. You finally get up to the room. You're like, all right, it's 5.30. I have one hour. I okay. got the hour. Okay, hour's good. I would have had two and a half, but I got one, thanks to all that shit. 6.28. I look at my phone. Youngblood. I just got back. Just got what? back! What? What is with these electric vehicles? He's got to get out of these relationships. I know. The it's Tesla, crazy. It just feels statusy. It sounds like a piece of shit. Well, it's a great car and it runs really well. How? It's fast, but the How charge. How is it a great car? Well, it's it's. Uh, it took him an extra hour and a half to get there. Well, it's uh, he got caught in traffic. He hit five o'clock traffic, so I I just barely skirted by it. But because he had to stop. This is like the uh, swingers. You always double down. He's like, but I lost. I'm right. like, how could it be great if he keeps getting fucked on this thing? Well, I'll tell you, the next day, we do the gig. The next day, we had to charge because we're going three-hour drive. So we had to charge, then go eat. You force yourself to eat, and then you get back in the car, and it's ready to go. But the, your whole world is just about, where's the station? How far are we from the charge station? It'd be like if you were always on empty. That's what it feels like. You're yeah. like, where's the gas station? Nightmare. But that kind of thing, dry, I hate the, ah, 10 minutes. Ten minutes turned into three hours. Uh, that's horrible. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, because we're weird with time. It's like a know? black comic set. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I got it, but I liked it. Ten minutes turns into three oh, hours. Oh, I see, I see. They that's, go long. That's good. They go long. Many, many black. Not all. Not all. Jesus, you're putting yes. me in a weird spot here. No. Many black comedians are known traditionally <laughs> for going well over their time. That's true. It's a stereotype, but I've seen it quite a bit. Yes. I can back that up. Not yes. all. Dave Chappelle, for instance. Yeah. Many, many, many others. Roy Wood Jr. keeps it tight, but I can name six others who don't. So there you go. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll cut this whole episode. Sure, sure. Oh. Uh, Hung over. But yeah, so... Uh, but you don't want to look like a diva uh -huh. because you're like, uh, I just got to get back. And he's like, we're hanging out. I'm like, I know, but you've already done your stuff. You've, right. already you've been here since 11. You yes. showered and shit and shaved. So that was it. So. Yeah. Boy, how are the gigs? Eh, okay, see, it's in one of these warehousey airplane hangar type places. Right. You know, where the stage is built that day and uh -huh. they got, they got a K-pop the next night. You know, they just tear it all down. Not great. Uh, OKC was they were nice, but it wasn't full, and uh, a lot of hooting and hollering. And those rock clubs, they uh, they almost feels like they're encouraged to hoot, right? Like an owl. Well, it's a hoot nanny is down there. That's true. It's a honky tonk. Now, how are the women down there in Oklahoma with the hats and the jeans with the boots? Is it that kind of thing? Well, it's a lot of glitter, a lot of fake tits, a lot of bad tans, and a lot of pink boots. Right. The you pink know boots. these kind of Walmart cowboys or yeah. cowgirls. But yeah, you know that that's a type. A lot, a lot of bedazzling on the jeans. Yes. you know, a lot of, lot of neck wrinkle. Yes, I know, I'm familiar. They're dipping. Um, they're all like shapely. Yeah, they're a thick group. It's a lot of, a lot of eating meat and corn down there. Right. But uh, yeah, so then we drive to Dallas, and that was the fucking tits. I love Dallas. That is a great comedy town and a great theater. The Majestic, right downtown. You could see it. I'm like brushing my teeth, looking out the window at the Majestic Marquee. That's a fun feeling. Great time. Marquee, Norland. 
You got that right. So yeah, had a blast, and uh, Young Blood, he's the man. But that that really got me because that's all I need is that that, that de- decompression time. Yeah, it's hard to understand, comprehend how desperately you want that alone time. Because I just had this, you know, I was in Seattle. And you fly back, and you get a ride to the airport. I was with another comic, Dustin Nickerson, very nice guy, drove me to the airport. So you're with the comic, at first, so you're going, oh, yeah, that was fun, crazy night, crazy story, yada, yada. Yeah. You get through, and now you're in the security line. You yeah. go through security, yeah. and then you're in the lounge, and then uh, you're, you're, the lounge is around, everyone's around, and then you get on the plane. It's packed. So you're self-conscious for like seven yes, hours. Yes, yes. Because you want to pick your nose, touch your balls, right. get a boner. Say the N word, whatever. You just want to live your life, and it's a lot of brain power. Is this the terminal? Where's the gate? How's my bag? Is my bag still here? What line am I? What what number are we on? You know, it's a lot of mental bullshit. Yeah. So sometimes you just want to get home and be like, I I, I need an hour to yeah. just not even. That, but also, like, pull the boogers out, yes. put your thumb in your ass, yes. whatever. And you're about to perform in front of a thousand people, so maybe you'd like to get your head in the game a little uh-huh. bit. You know, maybe you'd like to look at a note, see the new joke. That's another uh, epidemic. Is you show up to a show and you're like, "All right, what's the new joke I got to work on?" All right, let me let me take a quick look at the punchline. And people are like, "Hey," and you're like, "I, I got to look at this." This is a common problem now. Is no matter what your body language yes, is, yes. people don't take in. I'm not looking to socialize right now. I blame the I phone. Will sit like this in a situation, and someone comes over and goes, "Hey, uh, so how about that show last yeah. night?" And you're like, I, "Am I what what?" More can I do? Uh, yeah, I can't multitask. Exactly. To let you know that I'm like, I'm not really feeling the hang right now. I'll go to the bathroom just to check the text all sometimes. the time because you don't want to be rude and you don't want to be bothered. I did it at the stand last night where I, I got a lift and it was like a seven minute till the lift got there. Yeah. And I was just all done socializing. I'm so I went to the you. bathroom and sat on the toilet. And I've watched the lift click down to three minutes and then came out and everyone's like, well, you just took a nasty shit, huh? And you're like, yeah, that was a shit. Yeah, it was crazy. We'll go with crazy shit. shit. Yeah, I, I'm so with you. And uh, it's t- I, I'm a big block walker. I'll walk the block. Oh, yeah. That's all I'm ever doing. I mean, I'm always, you know me, I'm 45 minutes early for everything. So I'm just doing laps around buildings most of my life. Well, that's the weird thing about comedy is it's like forced socializing because we're, we're going to work. And look, sometimes the socializing is great. You're like, hey, I get to see my pal. We get to talk shit. We get to vent a little. But then sometimes you're like, I just want to do my set and skadoodle. Of course. I'm but the king of the skadoodle. Love look who you're talking skadoodle. to. Nobody skadoodles faster than I skadoodle. Oh, yeah. But I, last night, we're at the stand, and uh, Lev Fur he gets a bunch of cigars, and he tells Ari, bring cigars. So Ari comes with cigars. Berg comes with cigars. We're all smoking cigars. We're doing it indoors, in the green room. Lev, Berg. Ari, me, you popped in, which was unexpected and exciting. And then uh, Ari's like, ah, I got to go do a spot at the cellar. Yeah. He's got half. I was smoking the Joe Rogan cigar. It was the best cigars I've ever had. They're very good. He smokes half. He's got to go. Berg's like, well, I got the baby tonight. He leaves. I go do my set. I come back. Lev left. Jeez, not even a Lev. I was like, what the fuck just happened? I got half of a cigar. He left you hanging. Yeah. Eh, that's not bad. Yeah, right. I'll throw um, it out there. But yeah, that's that's a bitch when you come back. But also, hey, you're taking a dump on the you're taking a fake dump. So, maybe. well, after that, yeah, because all that's left is scraps and scrumps. Yeah, that's the stinkers. <laughs> yeah, a little B squad riffraff. I get it. You, you got that straight. Uh, oh, I had something and I lost it. Shit in my ass. E- either way, so I gotta hear about Seattle. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff over here. Let me just do lay a it quick on me, fatty. Peak. Put it right in my ass. Uh, Laura Peak. Peaks Valley. I mean, it was a crazy, crazy weekend. So what happened was I went to Radio City Music Hall to see old Red State Nate. Saw you there. Who did three shows at Radio City, which is about 18,000 people, 16,000 people, which is just unbelievable. And now he just fucking hosted SNL, which is the craziest. (laughs) Insane. I heard Lauren just saw his special. Yeah, I think maybe. I mean, he was at... The Tonight Show, I think he came down and said hello there. Or oh, something. okay. They, did, they gave, him a, they gave them a, a a tour of 8H. Oh, wow. So I think they had a they suspected. And he, he was been in talks a little bit. It's been out there. Well, it's also nice to have a real comic hosting SNL again. Because he's not, I wouldn't say he's a household name. You know, it's no. not like an Adam Sandler or a, even a Bill Burr who's pretty huge. 
You know, so it's nice to have like, oh, this guy's not that famous. I mean, he's famous, but he's not huge, and he's going to host SNL, this giant show. Well, this is going to get him into the stratosphere, I oh, think, yeah. I hope. He's and, stratton. And this is the way I've always said, this is what SNL should be and is meant to be. Of a course. A comic doing a monologue. Of course. It's not being a monologue. Now, Tilda Swinton comes out, and then he goes, oh, this is uh, good to be here. And then, like, Anthony Anderson comes out yes, dressed as yes. whatever, or whatever the guy's name is. Well, that's how uninteresting. him and the other guy. So uninteresting actors are is you got to get some comedic guy to come in there and go, oh, I fart in your face. She's like, boo, look at these Hi. sketch guys. They're wacky. Kenan Thompson. What did I say? No, I said oh. Anthony Anderson. Oh, yeah, either way, chubby black. Yeah. One of them's in trouble. Didn't one of them punch somebody or fuck somebody? I think Anthony Anderson. I think he's got a few. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he's got a couple of things out there. Either way, went long. Yeah. Um, Howie Long, uh, <coughs> Long Island. So I'm at Radio City. We're hanging out. This is before you got there. We desperately needed you there. My God, it was good. To, good to be there. Uh, great hang. You, me, Shane, Nate, Kramer, the Butler. Sure. Um, and I'm sitting there, and Nate goes, "Hey, so uh, Eddie Vedder. He's friends with Eddie Vedder. They did a big benefit together. <laughs> wow. That was a while ago. He told Eddie." You know, all my friends obsessed with the band. He's seen them 65 times. And, uh, my, you know, I had them play a B-side when I did wow. Letterman. So we told Eddie this whole story. Holy shit. Eddie said, I'm going to check him out. I doubt he did. Who knows? Nobody likes me. Fast Eddie. And uh, so Nate says, so Eddie, my friend, your idol, he's coming to the shows in Seattle. Uh-huh. I go, wow. And he goes, so you want to come out? You can come out and meet him, hang out. He'll be hanging out. When, when is the next time you're going to meet old Ved? I go, well, I don't know. The wife's pregnant. I got spots. Uh, let me just see. And he's like, all right. He's like, Eddie Vedder. Wow. He'll be there. Man. We're going to hang. And I go, well, that's pretty enticing. You know, because it's not just like a handshake. Sure. It's like a sit backstage, feet up. We're hanging out. It's a hang. So I go, boy, that's pretty uh, tantalizing. He goes, we'll fly you out. I oh. mean, Nate is extremely successful. He goes, I'll fly you out first class, put you up. I'll tell you what, you can do spots on the shows, eight minutes clean, which I'm like, oh, good. Yeah. He's like, you do you eight minutes it. clean? He goes, uh, I'll give you X amount of dollars. Pays better than any one I ever opened for. Wow. I'll tell you that. Wow. How about that? So I go, okay, well, let me just talk to the wife. And she goes, what are you out of your mind? Go. That's like the best thing ever. When are you going to get a chance to? This is like your baby shower or whatever you call it. Free flight, a hotel, meeting your hero, and a gig that's paid. I mean, on paper, this looks pretty good. Paying a bunch. So I text Nate, and I go, you know what? I'm in. Hell yeah. I'm going to go to Seattle. I'm going to meet Eddie Vedder. Which, by the way, I go to Seattle 17 times a year. Sure. And the Walsh, Derek and his wife, Erica, my dear friends, and the kids, of course, happen to be on vacation. It's her birthday. They're in Palm Springs. All right. So I'm a little sad because I'm missing them. And as you may or may not know, every Halloween, I go there to spend Halloween with the children. Yes, yes. But now I'm having a child of my own, so I'm missing it. So I'm devastated. Funkle. So there's a weird sadness that I'm going to Seattle. I'm missing the 40th. Palm Spr They're in Palm Springs. I'm in Seattle. I wish they were there. They wish I was there. Well, you fill the void with a uh, Vetter. So you get, but you get Vetter. So I'm getting Vetter. Doesn't get any better than that. So I'm very excited. I go, I'm in. He goes, okay, great. I'll get all the details. I get all the details. And this is weird. I'm not used to traveling like this. It's all just bloop, taken care of. That is nice. So I get my app, just updates, first class, come to the airport, the whole thing. I go out there. I hop on the plane. I fly to Seattle. Now, before that, they go, hey, I just randomly talk to our good pal, Sam Morrill. Ah, uh, yes. I call old Take Sammy eyebrows. the Bull. Check in with Sam. How you doing? We shoot the shit for about five and a half hours. Long combo. Wow. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be in Seattle. I'm opening for Sandler. Holy in Seattle. come guzzle the Nazi. And I go, wait, you're in Seattle with Sandler? When? He's like, Friday. And this I'm like, I'm in Seattle with Nate on Saturday. Oh, my God. This keeps getting better and better. And you, you, you keep, you're up in it. He's like, oh, we got Vetter. Well, I got Sandler. I mean, this is a who's who. Well, I go, well, that's a, that's a, it's a very 90s weekend. That's so I true. go, interesting. All right, well, that's cool. Maybe we'll see you. Take care. Comb your hair. I hang up the phone. <laughs> Nate Bargatze. Hey, we're going to go out Friday to see Sandler. Oh, hell yeah. So I go, that's crazy. I just got off the phone with Sam. He's opening. And he goes, okay, well, you're welcome to come Friday. If not, no big deal. You can come Saturday. So now yes. I sit and I go, huh. 
I'm trying to be home. I was off the road. I thought Philly was my last gig. Yep. I want to be home. I'm trying to nest. Did you have to cancel shit for this? Elliot Nest. I had to cancel a bunch of shit. I had to nest cancel day. seller spots, which you know how Ooh, sensitive that is. Of course. But this is, you got a good excuse. I had to cancel a bunch of stand spots. That's not so bad. And then uh, I had something else on Sunday. I had to get, and I just like my Sundays. And then Monday, I was supposed to drop my car off. It was a whole thing, which I have to right. do today, which is a whole fucking nightmare. But anyways. Oh, you left the suit, too. You didn't take the suit. Oh, uh, the suit. Today's the day. I'd rather make my own suit. Uh, so, uh. Love suit. Suit to nuts. So I go, fuck, I gotta. Uh, zoot, zoot. So I gotta cancel all this stuff. I hate canceling the yes, whole thing. Yes, yes, cancel culture. So I'm sitting there going, should I go Friday? Sandler, it's an extra day gone. Do I wanna meet Sandler? Do I care? What do I do? Wow, what a life. Do I wanna meet Sandler? Let me weigh my options. Well, here. you're like, it's another day. You know, the road, it, I get take, it. it beats you up. Of course. Dooby doo. Ooh, Adam Sandler. Ooh. Sandler is better. No, it is. Yeah. Better. <laughs> so I go, yeah, what the hell? I'm gonna go out Friday. Come on, I gotta go see Sam in an arena. Yes! How fun is that? So I go, put me down for a Friday. I'm down for Friday. I fly out first class. Thanks to Nate. I appreciate it. I go to the hotel. Beautiful. Fairmount Olympic Hotel. Oh, that's lunch. Spectacular hotel. I say, where, Sam, where are you? He goes, I'm at the Four Seasons. I go, boy, Nate's a cheap piece of shit. Wait, wait, which one's better? Olympic sounds pretty good. I think the Four Seasons is the high as it gets. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Interesting. But Fairmount is badass. It's yeah. It's killer. But Four Seasons is... Is that the peak? Pinnacle? I think so. As far as a chain, I'm sure there's some hotel called, you know, fucking... The Orpheum Dick. Yeah, Putin's Playground or whatever. <laughs> uh, but any farts. So the, the Olympic is spectacular also. So I'm down the street. I hit up Sam. He's like, I'm playing basketball with Sandler. I'm oh, like, this is crazy. He goes, well, when we're done on. hooping, I'll text you. And I'm like, oh, this, okay, Lord. that's crazy. Wacky. So I go walk around Seattle, which is a fucking hellhole sure. downtown. It's crazy. I'm just of getting course. chased by zombies and Fentanyl. the whole thing. Uh, I go to Pike Place, yada, yada. So then Nate gets to town. Hey, we're going to have dinner at the big hotel place get a nice big free steak which is delightful tour manager friend from high school nothing wrong with that i was like, guess this about nate he really sticks to his buddies his tour manager he went to elementary school wow. with. he's got his high school buddy with him he's got another guy. it's all nashville guys he's known for years he's got his dad opening half the shows he is a, a good loyal man so yes. we have dinner now we go up to his room. We're kicking it. His room is the size of my parents' house. It's sure. massive. It's literally bigger than my parents' house. <laughs> We're sitting up there bullshitting. Nate's got to take a call. He's like, I got to, I don't know if it's his wife or show business, SNL, whatever it is. Right, they're going to Paul Simon in there. So he goes on the phone. And now this is the trouble with being on someone's tour. Uh huh. Hit I me, like to make the decisions. Yes, you like a plan. I like a meal. I like to go. I like to be early. I like to be nestled. I like to put my feet up. Yes, yes, nestle crunch. So uh, I'm looking at the phone. I'm like, 7.10. Show's at 8? 7.30. Ooh. I'm looking at the thing. It's 7.20. Oy. Now, hey. you know. You got some shit openers, I'm sure. Well, you got Sammy the Bull opening uh. and, uh, you know, one of my dear friends, one of my favorite comics. Sure, killer. Wouldn't mind seeing him in an arena. That'd be fun. And who, who else? We got Tim Meadows on this bitch. Tim Meadows is on the show and Joe Vesey. Oh, he's a good egg. So I'm looking at now it's 7.30 and I'm like, okay. And you can't be like, Hey, what the fuck? Right. Because I'm in the hotel and the car and the limo and the... The first class and the steak and the Olympic. So I'm like, ah, I'm missing the thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I get it. He's going to do his... He's, he doesn't give it. He's got a business. But can't you go? Well, because they uh, the ticket, they're VIP ah. tickets. Backstage, VIP. Good we're, point. And we're going underneath the, the, underneath the arena. The like, bowels. Where the thing. So you're kind of like... I thought about it. I'm like, can I just have my ticket? But then that's like, I just got on the tour 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the other thing is, Nate and I are old friends, but they're on a worldwide tour for a year. I'm just the guy that's popping in for three days. Yeah, You, you can't be like, oh, excuse me? Exactly. Can we go to Chipotle, please, and leave a little early? For right, the right. That you're wrenching the gears. So I'm just going with the flow, and finally we leave. We hop in the Sprinter van, which is so fun. It's a big van, uh, purple very, lights. Very tall. Very exciting. You sound like Rain Man. 
Very tall. Tall, tall, tall. Very tall van. Uh, so we get in the van. We're shooting the shit. We're chopping it up. We're laughing. I'm telling stories. We're yucking it. We go over there. We go into the bowels underneath, which is so exciting because I haven't done an arena. I've oh. been to an arena show like that in Bowel years. Movement. So we walk up the thing. We're VIPs. They walk us in. We walk into the back area, like the um, the floor of the arena. The oh. 17,000 people. Woo! You just hear like... <sighs> Hell yeah. And Tim Meadows is on stage. And I'm like, huh, okay. Maybe Meadows is hosting. Uh Aha. You know, he's not doing a lot of sets, so maybe he's the host. They go along. So we walk in through the floor of the arena, and it's crazy because the stage is right here. We're, like, at the side of the stage. Oh, I love that. It's a concert. And then, like, our seats are up over there. So we walk through the floor, and you're just in the arena. Ah, Getting walked through with VIP passes, and Nate's a celebrity. and everyone's just We're surrounded by thousands of people. And I hear Tim Meadows go, all right, I'm going to bring up your next comic. And I'm like, here we go, Sammy, baby. And he goes, this guy, one of my closest friends. Uh, and I'm like, well, maybe he's full of shit. Maybe okay. it's a bullshit intro. Yeah, these actors are all liars. You know him. He loves you. You love him. Adam Sandler. Uh, and I go, fuck! Uh, we miss Sam! And in Nate's mind, he's like, hey, perfect timing. Sweet. <laughs> So I'm bummed to miss Sam. I felt like a dad. I felt sad. I wanted to cry. I was you, like, I just wanted to see my buddy boy in an arena. You missed the Little League game, Pops. So I felt like, fuck, but what are you going to do? I'll see him at the cellar, but it's an arena it's for It's an arena. Sakes. You want to watch the guy crush it with his dark eyebrows. So that was frustrating. Then we go up to the, uh, like the, the top. We have seats that are like badass, but when we got to the top area to walk down we were like this is good here because there's no mm. one around so we watched the whole show and i gotta say it's a hell of a show oh yeah he sings a lot of songs it does really surreal funny stuff it's a great show i really enjoyed it the sandman did it the sandman did it so it was a great show is it sorry is it all songs or is it uh some some stand-up in there too is it all guitar he does a lot of stand-up oh a lot wow. of bits and uh he'll do about five minutes of bits and play a song and he does like six seven minutes of bits play another song okay and then later he starts doing a bunch of songs got it does he close with the farley so here's the thing so then towards the end of the show he's like all right i'm gonna do a little th- light up your phones a little tribute to my friend he's doing the farley and it plays the video and i get emotional oh, i mean it's huge. beautiful it's a beauty i'm teared up i'm literally like a tear down the cheek Jeez. as he sings about farley and i'm really in it like wow and he's talking about his buddy and you see this old footage and not just means a lot to him. Farley meant so much to us. Sure, sure. I mean, that was uh, that was our guy. A van down by the river. And uh, Chippendales. We're sitting there watching the clips, and all of a sudden, it's like this. And I'm like, this Jesus, fuck. And they're like, come on, we're going down to meet ah, Sandler. Jeez, I'm about to jizz here. Exactly. So I'm like, oh, that's amazing. But I'm like, but uh. yeah, yeah. And so now, and you've had this before, I'm sure. When you're like a VIP part, they got to sneak you down before the show ends. Yes, yes. So you're leaving, and like the crowd's going crazy, not a dry eye in the house, but you're like, okay, down these steps over right, here, so right. you're kind of like taken out of it. Yes, yes. We go back to the side of the stage. There's Sam. I give him a pat on the ass. He goes, oh, my God. you got to remember, Sam's having the night of his life. Of course. Playing ball with the Sandman. He played basketball with Sam. He did an arena in Vancouver the night before. He said he ripped. It was the set of his life. We he, missed it. Amazing. He's all, uh, he's happy Gilmore. He's happy Gilmore. So we, uh, we're we talking. He's like, we're all going out for steak after this. Hell, yeah. And then now I'm side stage. You watch Sandler finish his show, and he comes down the steps wow. and just walks. Oh. Right by after a two hour concert, and you're like, this is crazy. Crazy. Like, there's 17,000 people just watched this guy. He's the biggest movie star ever. And now he's just here. Right he's here. closer than Chuck is. And what is he, about five foot eight? Nah, I think he's taller than that. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's, I saw the photo. He's uh, appropriately dressed horribly. Yeah, yeah. He's he, got six layers on. Yes. Jeans. Hawaiian shirt, orange uh, hoodie. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. So he comes back, and Sam's like, this is my friend. Jo- oh, he's one of my favorite guys. And Sam was very nice. Hey, nice to meet you. Wow. We go in the back, and uh, it's me, Nate, Meadows, Sandler, Vessi, Nate's crew, Sandler's crew. Food? Uh, not really for this, like, 
fingery foods. But we're going out to eat. Okay, okay. I like a finger. And then his dog, Bagel. Bagel? Little uh, bulldog. Oh, that's his dog. That's his dog. Oh, very Jewy of him. And that was sweet. He came over and gave me a little love, sat on my feet, and I was petting him, which Bagel. is nice. You're like, well, the dog likes me. Yeah, that's something. That's something. So, uh, and he's one of these guys. And Nate goes, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting SNL. And we all, oh, my God, which he had told us earlier, but it's exciting to tell Adam. Sure. And then you got Sandler and Meadows giving him advice. They're like, well, it'll be like this. Uh-huh. Lauren's like this. Wow. Everyone's doing Lauren impressions. And yes. So you're like, that's surreal. Because you forget these guys were the show. They were the show in the, the, the 90s. Maybe some some would say the peak. Yes. So that's Mike's crazy. Peak. And uh, you're just chatting, you know, hanging out. And they go, we're all going to steak. Yeah. So we go, great. And then uh, Sam jumps in the van with us. So it's me and Sam and Nate. And now we're chopping it up in the van. Hey, he took you over Sandler. That's, the guy. that's not too shabby. Pretty good. So we go over to the steakhouse. Now, this is one of those deals where they're staying open just for Sandler. Oh, that's some celebrity. It's 11 o'clock at night, and this is top-of-the-line steakhouse, which is amazing that you get to a level of success in comedy. Yes. Where a full restaurant is like, yeah, yeah, we'll stay open. There's some Mexican guy back there like, who? (laughs) All right. All right. I guess so. Also, how about that waiter? I mean, what a story for that guy. He's some Seattle queef. He gets to go home and go, hey, you're not going to believe this. And probably gets a couple thousand dollar tip. Good point. Yeah, that's that's nothing wrong with that. Because if you're staying open late, I'm sure they're throwing him some cake. And this is the most generous guy in the business. Sure, but he's going to go home and tell his plus-size wife, hey, I've waited on Sandler and a couple other guys I didn't know. Yeah, how about sucking me off, little lady? It'd be nice. And we'll put on Billy Madison. So Sandler is just... The most generous. I mean, he tells everybody come. So there's like 25 people in there. Yeah. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy. Oh, good. I like hair. A little awkward. Full bush. A little tough. Tough it up. So we're going in there, and now it's always awkward. You're going in there. There's a movie star, the whole thing. And I'm thinking, I'm I'm sticking with Nate and Sam. Yeah. I want to sit with my buddies here. I don't want to get stuck with the, the boom operator. And the, the crane guy. And nothing wrong with these guys, but you don't want to chit-chat. You want to hang. I love those guys, but you I, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to be like, so how long you been doing it? You're a comic. Oh, what kind of comedy? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I want to be with my buddies. You want to get in there. So we go in, and it's a long table. It's like a Batman table. Bruce right, Wayne. Right, right, past the salt. So uh, Adam is up at the top. Corner, uh, as you do, eating next to him is I think the tour manager. Uh-huh. Then three uh, empty seats. Huh. Then a couple guys. Uh, so Nate, he takes the lead. Uh, he walks in. He sits next to the tour manager. Okay, that's one seat gone. Sam sits next to him. That's twofer. So I'm like, okay, I got the third seat. I'm with Sam and Nate. Now perfect. You, you still got a, a guy on your left, a rando. Yes, rando guy on the left. I okay. don't know who he is. And there's a, a pair of headphones, just like they, like Bose headphones, oh. in front of the play, which I don't notice, but it's an empty seat. There's some headphones. Crossbow. So I just pull up the chair, and I go, all right. I sit down. I'm with Sam to my right. And then this guy kind of gives me a look, picks up the headphones, and goes like, <sighs> oh, puts boy. them over there. And I go, oh, shit, did I just take someone's seat? And he's like, nah, it's fine. I'll just move it over here. What's the, what's the, the big whoop? Well, I don't know. I think he was saving a seat, I guess. But the seat is empty. Yeah. The headphones were in front of the plate. They weren't on the plate. Uh-huh. I don't know if that makes a difference. They're up here. I don't know about the saving seats. I mean... You're not on the show, Fatty. <laughs> well, he's like part of the crew, I think. He works there. He belongs. He was there before me. All right. Well, crew schmoo. You can sit and talk to the uh, the manager. But I don't know. I just thought, well, the chair was empty. It was, it was pushed in. Yeah. And I want my buddy boys. So I go, oh, shit. Sorry. But also I'm like. All right, well, I guess he can move over there. No big yeah, deal. Yeah. But I can feel the tension. Sure. And I don't want to feel tense. I, I think everyone hates me anyway, so I'm like... Yes, Mike tense. I'm like, all right, so I'm just sitting there, and then a minute passes, and this guy, who I'm sure is a very nice guy, goes, all right, I'm getting up, but I'm saving this seat. And he puts the napkin on the chair, and he's like, Jesus this is my seat. Jesus Christ. He's like, I'll be right back. This guy's a real SS. So I can feel the tension. I go, ah, oh, you got it. Sorry again about the seat. And I'm just sitting here like this, uh, and now Nate and Sam have gotten into heavy-duty 
talk. Uh-huh. They're talking about something. Oh, you know, at that point, I think Sandler was talking to Nate. So they're kind of leaning down, talking to the Sandman. Oh, you got the whole thing where you do it. I want to hear this. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, I got nothing over here. This guy hates me. So then I order. Then now we're ordering steaks for the second time of the day, same night, by the way. Oh, right. We went to the steakhouse earlier. It's a and lot you of red meat. feel awkward because you're like, look at the menu. You're like, all right, well, I, I guess I'll have the $175 fucking tomahawk steak, please. Well, when in Rome, you know, you're at the nice joint. Yeah, it, it feels awkward. You're of like, course. Can I give you 80 bucks? I know. You don't know me. And I already give me 200, 200 bucks out of the gate. And I feel like, an, you know, but he's worth $750 million, whatever it is. Sure. So then... The waitress comes by and goes, uh, is anyone sitting here in this seat? And I go, yes, yes, yes. There's a man here. Tense, for sure. Very tense man. There's a person here. And then I hear, no, I moved over here. Oh, boy. And I look, and he's across the way now. Ah. So I go, hey, but you heard. It's like a Larry David. I'm like, you heard me. I, I protected tried. the seat. Yes. I'm and then helping. He says, I'm supporting. He says, uh, well, you, you. You made up for some of it. He's Jesus. like, you, you won a little bit back. What's that term? He goes, uh, you redeemed. Your, he goes, you redeemed yourself a little bit. A little Jeez. bit. This guy should be killed. Who is this psycho? <laughs> the passive aggressiveness is uh, at another level. He's in the red over here. Maybe he's kidding. I don't, I know. don't know. I don't know the guy. Later, Sam seemed friendly with him. So I'm sure he's a nice guy. Maybe he was upset. But it wasn't like a primo seat. It wasn't like it was yeah. like next to Sandler Of or course, anything. of course. Yeah, I don't know about this guy. Call in, sir. I want to hear your side of it. Maybe he thinks you farted on him or something happened. I think he, maybe he was kind of kidding a little or something. I don't know. Kind of redeemed. All I can think is, I'm to him, I'm this loser, hanger on guy who's trying to get next to Adam. And nothing could be further from the truth. Sure, I'd sure. I'd love to be home. It's like 11 o'clock. I'm on East Coast time, so it's 2 a.m. Right. I don't even want to be there. No, you're not a fan of Sandler even. No. No, oh, I'm just kidding. Who kidding. isn't a fan? Kidding. Everybody love loves Sandler. him. Come He's on, Billy. I went to Big time. Daddy. Yeah, the shampoo is better. How oh, funny is that? Yeah, so it's good. So funny and deep. Yeah, little Nicky. That's a classic. Yeah, one of the best. Anyways, on Cut Jams. But anyways, I'm just tired and like I, I'm not even joking. I would have been like, ah, I'm gonna, I'll skip it because I just hate that feeling of like. I don't want anything no, from no. you. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm just. I don't belong here. Right. But anyways, stick. the guy. I'm sure he's a nice guy, obviously. But I, I felt awkward. So then I felt like I had to really lean into Sam and Nate to be like, I'm. These are my best friends. That's why. Yes. So everything they said, I was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. I couldn't even hear them. But I was right. like, whoa, that's a classic, uh, Nate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Woo, that's uh, you and me, old friends. <laughs> But uh, so it was a little awkward, and then uh, isn't that funny? You have this great night with friends and, and a giant celebrity, and we can have it all torn to pieces by one cunty comment. Oh, That's I was our lives. just living in my head. I'm like, I'm a piece of shit. I should have just sat over there. I shouldn't even be here. I should be doing my own goddamn gig. I'm a piece of shit. We miss Sam. Yes. Uh, but anyways, it was nice. And then Sandler left a little before everyone. He went down the road. He was like, Joe, I'll, I'll see you again, man. Good to see you. Wow. I said, Hey, nice to see you. Thanks a lot. How about he's like, that? Nate, congrats. Unbelievable. You're killing it. And then Sam, he did like not even a big goodbye. They're just buddies. Yeah. He's like, all right, Sam, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll hoop. Oh. And uh, he's like, you got it. They're just going to play basketball every oh, day. Oh, man. Did he have a drink? Cocktail? Who? Sandler? I don't know if he had a drink. Beer? He was eating some kind of chicken dish. Huh. Interesting. A chickeny dish. But he was quiet. He was just eating his dinner. You could tell yeah. like, he had traveled, done a concert, and was just like, I need to eat. Yeah. He wasn't like... Who's your bougie boo? Like yeah, he was just yeah. kind of having a nice right. dinner, and so you do. You feel guilty. You're like, I'm sorry that you just bought me this meal. I'm I an know. Idiot. I don't. I, I would have bought my own meal. I'm so sorry. Two hundred bucks for a piece of meat. So uh, yeah, it must have been five, six thousand dollar tab. Easy. No, then you tip on top of that. And how was the steak? Oh, it was unbelievable. Oh, yeah, of course. love to hear Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Great side. There was sides for everyone too. And that got awkward too because you're like, I'm passing the side, and then like this guy's got the mac and cheese. Yeah. And I'm like. Can I get the mac get and cheese? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. And then I'm like blowing them. I'm like, thank you so much. Great pass. I appreciate yes. that. And you're like, fuck. Good, good headphones. I just, I, I couldn't sleep. I was sitting there staring at the ceiling being like, this guy hates me. He thinks I'm a piece of shit. He's uh, probably leaving negative reviews on my special. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so that was fun. So that's Saturday night, or Friday night. Yeah. We go back. We have a great talk. You all hug goodbye. You go out. Now, Saturday, I, I mean, how much time do we have? I got a lot of stuff here. 
Oh, my perfect. farts. Okay, perfect. I got to really cram this in there. So, cram it, baby. So UW, we go to the Washington, the University of Washington, who's sort of my adopted college team. You might remember I went to a game last year with Derek. Uh-huh. I've gone to a couple basketball games. I spend a lot of time out there. I really want to move there, frankly. You adopted a team? Yeah, I own the whole team. Oh, wow. Pretty good. I'm raising them. You but do, uh, all right. But uh, so I look at the calendar on Thursday. I text Nate. I'm like, you know, Washington playing Oregon, huge rivalry, and they're sure. ranked seven and eight. They're just two top ten teams. <laughs> right. I'm like, they're playing in Seattle. And he's like, well, I can't go because he's got two shows. He's got a headline. Sure. He goes, but Dustin Nickerson, comedian, <laughs> who's also opening, right? he's an alum, and he's like, he has a ticket. Okay. So he texts and he goes, "Yeah, I got an extra ticket." And I go, "Okay, well, can I have it? Are you offering me the ticket?" Yeah. He goes, "Let's go. We'll go to the game." I go, "Unbelievable! Exciting!" Now it's this is a little tricky. I've never met this person. Yeah, you don't know this knicker. I'm about to spend. Uh, please. So now I'm about to spend 14 <laughs> hours with this guy, yeah. and I'm like, I hope I like the guy. Sure, sure. And uh, he's got, we got mutual friends, obviously Nate, Steve Rogers, but it's it's no, you know, we're not. We're nervous around new people. Of I don't course, know. I got, of course. I got 14 friends, and I'm sticking with them. Well, he's a comic. That helps. But, yeah, it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game with a new guy. So I'm texting Steve. I'm like, he likes me, right? He's like, he's a fan. I'm like, okay, he better like me. Don't move his headphones. So uh, I go, okay, here we go. So now we meet up in the morning, and uh, everyone's down there. It's Nate, and Nick Thune is the other opener. Oh, I love Thune. Hilarious guy. Great guy. Very handsome, I might add. Oh, tall as a day is long. Gorgeous man. But anyway, so it's me, Thune, Nate, Dustin, which is nice because now you get a little group dynamic we before the date. Yes, yes. So we hang out. We're all chitting, chatting, getting ready for the big ball game. And this is the biggest game of the year. Ooh-wee. I mean, everybody's talking about it. Top 10, rivalry, winner take all, holy shit game. Do you buy the tickets? Or does, does... No, Nickerson, uh, he's in love. He got given tickets wow. by the AD. Wow. So he's got Tick. badass tickets. And he's saving me about 300 bucks because, you Hell know, yeah. me, I would have went. I would have gone hardcore and gotten a real nice ticket. Oh, yeah. You're the ticket master. So now we have tickets, nice ones. And uh, so we go out. We go, all right, let's go to the game. So we take a lift over there. We're getting to know each other. We're having a couple yucks. We walk down there. It's campus. It's autumn. It's college football. It's October. And what's so exciting is to go to a game that you're like, this is what I would be doing if I were home. Yes. I'd be watching this game. Oh, that's fun. And I'm at it. So then he gets the text. He goes, holy shit. The athletic director guy just offered me us field access. Field day. Pre-game field access. And I go, you got to be kidding me. Cop a field. Because he's big. He's got 800,000 followers. He's from Seattle, the whole thing. So they want him on the field. So we get field access. We go down there. You can see the photos, the video. Check out my YouTube. I did a whole video. It's pretty funny, if I might say. All right. So we're down there, and like the head coach is there, the wow. band, the cheerleaders. We're on the field, Jerry. Oh, my God. I love the field. And they're like, and we're out there. You're out there and loving every minute of that. And we saw Colin uh, Coward, Kaepernick. that piece oh, of shit, right. and uh, and uh, everybody else. Julio Rodriguez, Big uh, Mariner star. Everyone's out there. Hey, boy, Julio. Celebrities galore. It's exciting. It's just a thrill. We're on the field. We're on the bench. The players are walking by us. Penix Jr., he's going to win the Heisman. He's standing like where you are. I'm like, this is nuts. What a weekend. I got all these great photos, videos. The game is unbelievable. Our seats are killer. The game's unbelievable. I mean, I I recommend just watching the highlights of the game. One of the craziest games ever. We're there for it. Last second field goal misses. Everyone goes crazy. It's the best fucking day of my life. Hell yeah. Unbelievable. Can never thank Nickerson enough for taking me to this game, giving me the ticket, the on-field access. We're friends now. There you go, Dusty. We go back. We do the two shows. Didn't have the best sets of my life. Two arena. Theater. This is the two, theater. Two Paramount. Theater. Okay, okay. What, a seven and a nine? Something like that. Yeah, seven, nine, thirty. Okay. Sunday's five and eight, which I love. Woo-wee. You five. know me. Love an early show. Shows are good. It's a little tough because it's restricted. you, you got to be clean. Yeah. And I just, to me, shit's not a sw- I say shit. I'm like, I can't oh, say no. shit. I can't yeah. say Jesus. I can't say fuck. And you're used to doing an hour. I'm doing right. eight minutes. So it's a little bit, it's an adjustment for sure. Sure, sure. But hot crowds, great theater, great fun. Nickerson kills. Nate murders. Oh. I mean, his new hour is killer, and uh, that'll be a special soon. Of course. He won't stop writing. I mean, that, that Australia joke I love, the Pearl Harbor joke I love. I don't want to give too much away, but the guy is cooking. Yeah, he's one of the best going, obviously, no question about it. Just a, 
I, and so generous and, um, you know, just kind. And, and uh, the show was so good. I mean, he's just such an amazing comic. Great comic. Obviously. Uh, but, yeah, it's fun to watch him every night. We do the shows. Now we finish Saturday night. We all go out. We get dessert. Great hang. Sunday, I wake up. I'm nervous. Yeah. Eddie Vedder's coming to the oh, show. Oh, I forgot about the V-Man. I mean, I've seen Pearl Jam 54 times. Whee! I've seen Eddie seven times solo. I mean, you know, my, my, my childhood. I've been in the fan club since 96. Oh, man. Better um, safe than sorry. I'm gay. I mean, I've listened to every single bootleg, the whole thing. I got the, the books and the movies and the things and wow. Letterman. They, I, I played Pearl Jam with my Letterman set. And the more climbing the stage. Uh, there's so much there. All the stuff. I mean, I've spent a month and a half, two months of my life at Pearl Jam shows. I mean, yes. it's crazy. So I've traveled all over the world and, and just a constant companion. So now I'm meeting this man. And I, I'm like, I'm nervous. Of course. And I don't get nervous to meet celebrities, typically. No, I but know, this is the big one. This is the big white whale. Uh, you know, Meryl Streep. I've met Springsteen. I hung with Paul McCartney. Right. This Sandler. Is, uh, Sandler the night before, two nights before. So I'm like, woo. And you try to play it cool. Sure. So all day we're watching football. And in your head, you're like, what time's he coming? Does he, do we meet him before the show, after the show? What jokes am I going to do? Yeah, did you am get I going to bomb? Ted Baker suit on, I assume. A tuxedo. Get your hair did. Ted Baker jacket, and then I have okay. this moment. Now, this is awkward. All right. Because what do you do here? So it's time to get dressed for the show. Okay. And everything I wear is just band T-shirts. Uh-oh. So then I look in my uh, my suitcase. The clean shirts I have, I have a Buzzcocks T-shirt, uh -huh. a Springsteen T-shirt, and a Cheap Trick T-shirt. All right. But you don't want to look pandery like, ah. Uh? <laughs> Well, it's not his. It's not Pearl Jam. Well, so that would be unacceptable. Of course, of course. But it also does feel like, check it out. I know music. You like these guys. Right. I like these guys. And it's what one of those things that's not on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I just, that's what I own. Sure. And uh, I had my, uh, whatever, I forget what shirt I was wearing the night before, but it was like dirty, and you're like, duh. So you're Smells. like, you got to pick which one is the least... Embarrassing, but the jacket helps. The jacket helps, so it kind of disguises a little yes, bit because you don't yes. want to look like well, exactly a little cover up. So I'm like, well, Springsteen, he's friends with. That's weird. Cheap trick, maybe. Buzzcocks feels Buzzcocks feels too like I really know. A little on the nose. So I went cheap trick. All right, you know, not too over the top, and I got the jacket closed as much as possible. Yes. Uh, so you're like, okay, here we go. Now it's showtime. We're watching football all day. I, I'm sh I can't even eat. I'm like, what am wow. I going to say? I'm practicing lines. Are you you're listening to the music while you're getting ready? I'm always listening to oh, it. It's just part of my life. So adorable. I'm like, okay, here we go. We get in the, uh, the van. We head over there. You go upstairs. Now we're in the dressing room, and we're all hanging in Nate's room, and you're like, is he coming before? Is he coming after? Holy shit. And I'm, I'm like, thinking of the set but i'm trying to play it cool to hey whatever you gotta meet eddie eh, no big deal yes but in my mind i'm like this could be the beginning of a friendship oh. I could have vip tickets the rest of my life you might get in the band maybe the mandolin in the back uh, maybe i get to sing rock in the free world one day i'm having all these fantasies <laughs> dissident dissident uh, so i'm like ah something's gonna happen i this is exciting and Woo! he knows and i'm like i'm telling nate like you told him he's like he knows all about you he's coming here he knows he's meeting a guy so i'm like all right <laughs> all right here we go not too much now it's about showtime it's 4 55 5 he's coming to the early show Okay, I was good. Only Sixty for God's sakes. Four fifty-five. Sitting there, I am shitting my pants. I'm like, at yeah. any moment, Eddie Vedder is gonna walk through that door. Oh yeah. This is nuts. Uh, this is big, baby. So tour manager comes in. He goes, uh, "Hey, Joe." And I go, "Yeah." And he goes, uh, "Come here for one second. And oh, I go, God. "I go here. It is. Oh God. Here it is. They've told Eddie. Eddie's on board." The tour manager came to get me, only me. Oh, uh, well, what do you mean he's on board? Like, he knows you're a crazy he fan? He knows, that he because Nate's told him, I got a friend who's seen you 58 times and he's gay for you. I know, but you don't want to be the the weirdo. You don't want to be the, 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 the stalker. Well, I'm not a stalker. I'm, I'm on the show. I know, but, you know, it's like a girl. You don't want the girl knowing, hey, I jerked off to you earlier. I'm in love with you. It's, and she's like, it's her first date. I tell every girl I jerked off to okay. her. Okay. That's all, all I right. do. I just send out letters. I jerk uh, off to you. <laughs> all right. So he goes, hey. Hey, Joe, come here. And I go, 
whoo boy, heart starts racing. Here it comes. I walk over and I go, yeah. And he goes, uh, Eddie's rep called. It canceled. Oh. I go, how's that? Oh, no. What's that now? And he goes, uh, yeah, something came up. He didn't want to meet you. He couldn't make it. Oh, my God. He I heard go, you were a big fan. He couldn't face you. Hey, go, I go, uh, what are you kidding? Yeah. And he goes, no, no, yeah, something came up. He's not going to make it to the show. Ah. And he goes, I wanted to just pull you aside in case you had an emotional reaction. <laughs> and I go, no, that's all right. Now, I have to say this. There's part of me that's like a massive relief. Sure. Because you're afraid. My sets haven't been amazing. You don't want to bomb in front of Eddie. And he's like, oh, you're like a shitty comic that likes me. Oh, no, you don't want that. So, and there's a lot of pressure, too. Is he going to just be like, hello, hey, what do I say? So there's party that's relieved. And you're like, okay. So then you come back in the room. Then he tells everybody, yeah, Eddie's not coming. And Nate is just like, ah, jeez. Like, yeah. I flew there. I didn't need the money. I, I flew hope, there to meet Eddie Vedder. I hope he hears this. You, you fucked us, Ed. Well, his rep did say promise a future meeting. Ah. Oh, he right. said we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. Don't worry. Was, you know, so, I don't know if he was sick or whatever. Although the whole band just had COVID a couple weeks ago. But ah. so I don't know. Maybe something came up. He's got kids. Whatever. Traffic. Sure. Uh, sure. But, um, yeah, you got a hangnail. So you just go. Oh, all right. And then you just go. Well. This was fun. And then yep. my immediate thought is, as much fun as I had, I'm like, I could have gone to Palm Springs. It's my uh, friend's 40th birthday. I could have been yeah. down there. But I right, uh, right. had a great time. And by the way, I spent the day in West Seattle, which is one of the loves of my life. I walked on the beach. I went for a run. And, uh, and you got the game in. The game was unbelievable. The shows were great. And I got to say, it was just great to spend time with Nate, who sure. I used to be with every night for right. years. And uh, yeah, we used to knock him back. But um of course, it's been years since we've been able to hang like that. So just telling old stories. We talked about going to Turkey together and Kuwait and Iraq. I mean, we have a lot of water under that bridge. So oh, yeah. It was great to reunite and spend a few days with him and to watch him do comedy, which was great. It was sad to miss Sam's comedy. But to have me, Nate, and Sam together chopping it up was all worth it. Sandler was cool. The show was great. Yeah. Uh, so... Another time, another place. It'll happen, and maybe going there will set the groundwork for the next meeting. Now the next meeting has to happen. Maybe the next meeting will even be even better. Hey, Tacoma, January 11th through the 13th. Come on out, Ed. Well, Short see you there, ride. Edward. Half an hour ride. Wow. Well, what a, I mean, you know, what a tail. What a tangled web you weave. At least you got to go first class. Uh, nice hotel. Good steak. Pissed off one guy, but not bad. Yeah, I never get any of those things outside of there. Uh, but yeah, that guy hates me. What are you going to do? Yeah, well. I did feel bad. You know, better him than Sandman or better. Yeah, better Imagine him. pissed him off. Oh, boy. But uh, great weekend. Check out Nate live if you can get a ticket. Oh, please. It's a hot ticket. Going you fast. Might have missed it. But uh, a bunch of dates coming up. Uh, a couple of weeks. November 17th and 18th. DC Improv. I had to cancel the Thursday so I could be with my child. Yeah. And uh, November 17 and 18. Four shows, sell those out for God's sakes. And then uh, November 30th, I keep forgetting to plug this, November 30th, end of the month, December 1st and 2nd, Pittsburgh Improv. I have never worked Pittsburgh other than to open for Louis one time. Oh, it's a good room. It's out in the burbs, but it's all right. So yeah, Pittsburgh Improv, it's in Homestead, I think. That's what it is. Uh, November 30th, December 1st and 2nd, get those tickets. And then uh, Tacoma in January, go to punchuplive.com slash Joe hyphen list. Mm. That's the future, this Punch-Up Live. Yeah, I got to get on that. All right, uh, watch our specials, YouTube, Netflix, the whole thing, Soup to Nuts, MarkNormanComedy.com just added all new dates for 2024, and uh, hopefully there's no World War Three. We'll see you in hell, Chuck. Hey, check out my podcast, Fun Bearable, with comedian Ray Harrington. Uh, this is coming out early November. We just did a bunch of fun Halloween episodes. Four Halloween episodes throughout the month of October. Wow. Fun stuff, funbearablepod.com. There you go. Get on the Patreon, folks. Stuff's cooking. People are loving it. Almost all of them. Thank you. Thank you.